Hi, what I have here on the workbench today is an L4 Pro charger from XR along with some batteries. As usual, I will leave the links to these products in the video description below for those who are interested. The L4 Pro is a smart battery charger that can charge AA and AAA batteries of different chemistries. It is suitable for charging nickel metal hydride batteries as well as 1.5 volts lithium ion rechargeable batteries. It has four independent battery slots and you can mix and match the batteries to be charged. And it is fairly inexpensive, coming at just less than $16. For nickel metal hydride batteries, you can use the charger to automatically discharge the batteries. There is also a refresh mode and it will automatically perform charging and discharging cycles based on battery conditions. Occasional charging and discharging cycling with nickel metal hydride batteries can help maintain the battery capacities. Now, you probably have seen me using the L4 charger from XR in one of my earlier videos explaining how 1.5 volt lithium ion battery works. And that charger is here for comparison. And as you can see here, the main difference is the inclusion of the LCD on the L4 Pro and the additional discharging modes that I mentioned earlier. Besides the charger here, I also received these AA size 2700 mAh 1.5 lithium ion rechargeable batteries. If you are curious about how these 1.5 lithium ion batteries work, I'd recommend you checking out one of my earlier videos on this topic, which I will leave a link here. XR also provided me with these non rechargeable 1.5 volts AA 3.5 amp hour lithium batteries. Now, what are some of the advantages of these non rechargeable lithium batteries, you may ask? Well, there are at least quite a few. These non rechargeable lithium batteries have high energy density, and these are rated for 3.5 amp hours, as you can see here, which is 30% higher than these XR rechargeable ones. Also, it has long shelf life and can be stored for more than a decade and still holds its capacity. The lithium batteries are also lighter in weight, which is a benefit for portable devices. Also, these lithium batteries have slightly higher terminal voltage, I believe, and it maintains its voltage better during discharging. I'm not going to test these batteries here in this video. Actually, let's verify the voltage at least. So let's take one of these out. All right, I took one cell out. You can see here it's 3500 milliamp hour. And let's measure the voltage. Yep, as you can see, it's 1.8 volts versus the traditional 1.5 volts. So the terminal voltage is about 20% higher than your typical battery. Now, that said, most of the devices have tolerance built in and should be able to use these batteries with no problem. Anyway, let's get back to these 2.7 amp hour rechargeable batteries. I charged them up using the supplied L4 Pro charger. Once charged up, I did some capacity testing under different discharging conditions. First, I discharged the battery using just above 0.1C at 300 milliamps. And the capacity measured is slightly under 2700 milliamp hour. As you can see here, the measured capacity was just around 26 milliamp hour, which is close enough, I suppose, since the built in DC DC converter has its optimal operating region. Now, I'm not sure what discharging current XTAR used when certifying the capacity rating. If you recall, one of the issues we saw earlier with this kind of rechargeable lithium ion batteries is that their discharge curve is a staircase. And if you take a look at the blue dotted line, that is the discharge curve of the 1.5 volt 2.5 amp hour AA lithium battery I reviewed before. And the battery voltage drops suddenly to 1.1 volt when the capacity drops to roughly 20%. This gives the battery gauge circuitry found on some electronics a chance to warn the users that the battery is about to run out, but the change is actually quite sudden. XR had redesigned the discharge curve in this CLR4300, and you can clearly see this during the discharge test. Of course, there is significant voltage drop in the wiring, and the voltage displayed on the electronic load is quite a bit lower than what is measured at the terminal. But you can see that when we started the discharge test, the voltage measured at the low side was around 1.35 volts, and towards the end, it dropped to 1 volt, and the voltage was actually gradually dropping even further. Now, the video clip I captured here doesn't do its justice entirely. The voltage drop is actually quite gradual. It's occurring over a long period of time. But in my testing, I have definitely observed this gradual change in terminal voltage. So this redesigned discharge curve allows battery monitoring circuitry to give a much better estimate of the actual runtime definitely heads off to the designers at XTAR. In the next test, I discharged the battery with just under 0.5C at 1.3 amps. 
you can see that the circuitry towards the top section of the battery heated up to around 50 degrees Celsius during the discharging cycle, approximately one hour in. Remember, the top of the battery is where the built-in DC to DC converter is located. Interestingly, at 0.5C discharge rate, you can actually see the capacity we were able to get was actually slightly better at 2608 milliamp hour. So my guess is that the sweet spot is probably somewhere between 0.1C and 0.5C. Now I do wish XR would provide details of their capacity testing condition so that we can verify here. Needless to say though, the specified capacity is probably under the optimal testing conditions, but what we were able to get was close enough. The maximum current these batteries can handle is specified at 2.5 amps. So let's actually test that out. All right, so for this test, I'm gonna use the MDP L1060 electronic load from Miniware. And currently the discharging current is set at one amp. So let's start from there. And it's fine. Let's actually increase it. Let's do two amps. And you can see that two amps, there's no problem. You can see that the voltage drops a little bit. That's to be expected because we have these long leads. So now let me increase the discharge current to 2.5 amps. And it's close enough. Let's hit run. And the measured voltage at the electronic load side is just above one volt. So let's actually take a look using a multimeter. You can see here we're still getting roughly 1.4 volts. So I will let it run for a few minutes and let's take a look at the thermal profile. And now we have been running for a few minutes. And if you take a look at the thermal image here, you will see that the battery top had heated to about 70 degrees Celsius. And that is somewhat to be expected as the DC to DC converter is working very hard under this condition here. I will let it run for a few more minutes and we'll take a look at the thermal profile again. And a couple more minutes later, you can see the battery already heated to about 74 degrees. Well, I have no doubt that the battery can withstand the 2.5 amps discharging current continuously. I think you need to be very careful if you are installing the battery in a enclosed space, as I think the temperature will get much hotter, especially if your devices need multiple batteries. Now let's take a look at the thermal profile again. Yeah, you can see right now it's close to 78 degrees. At this temperature, the battery is already hot to the touch. So I wouldn't recommend running at this high current in an enclosed space. All right, so now we have been running for over 10 minutes now and you can see we're still holding up. So now I think what I'm gonna do is gonna increase the current a little bit. So let me zoom in. You can see the electronic load and I'm gonna increase the current a little bit to see how much margin there is in that spec. We are now setting at 2.8 amps, and let's give it a go. Yeah, it appears we're able to deliver 2.8 amps, no problem. So let's increase it even further. Let's do three amps. And let's start. So seems that we are able to draw three amps too. Okay. Let's increase further. Of course, I only connected it momentarily, so it doesn't necessarily mean it can actually sustain this current for a prolonged period of time. But nevertheless, it's able to deliver that. So let's do 3.2 amps. Okay, still able to deliver. And how about 3.5? Looks like we're still able to deliver. That's actually quite impressive. Although the voltage had dropped significantly. Now I suspect that is probably the wiring, but you can see that actually, no, it's dropping off. Yeah, you can see that 3.5 amps is not working because now it's oscillating. I just set it back to three amps and I'll let it run for a few minutes and see if we are able to run at three amps for a prolonged period of time. So it looks like at 3 amps, we are at least able to run for half a minute. And let's actually take a look at the thermal profile here. It's 72 degrees as I just started running this. 
and it's still okay. You can see that actually we are not able to run this much longer as it started oscillating again. That's because probably the internal protection circuitry had kicked in. So what I can say is that the 2.5 amp maximum current rating is actually quite solid. And if you do need to push it a little bit, I think there's no problem. There's quite a bit of margin. And the battery can support current higher than the rated maximum, at least in short durations. And I just removed the back cover of the charger, and I think we can remove the support as well. I don't know what's going on with the Chinese manufacturers lately, but the markings on most of these chips have been erased, just like what I have seen in many of the recent reviews. Perhaps intellectual properties are not well respected in China, and manufacturers have to guard their secret sauce to remain competitive. Anyway, as you can see, the board layout is actually quite clean. You can clearly see the four independent channels, one, two, three, four, each with this current sensing resistor. That would be the resistor here, you can see this R2 and R6, R35, and R39. Those are your current sensing resistors. You can also see that we have four larger size resistors, the two R70, these are 2.7 ohm resistors, and my guess is these are actually for discharging the batteries. And also you can see we have a transistor or MOSFET next to each of these 2.7 ohm resistors. This controller board is mated onto the display board via these headers. And if you take a look at the display board, you will see that the microcontroller, also the markings are removed as well. So not entirely sure why they need to do that. Anyway, I thought the battery charger is well designed and it's fairly inexpensive. The 2700 milliamp hour batteries provided had some cool technologies built in. I really like the re-engineered discharge curve that mimics that of a regular alkaline battery. And that's pretty much all I wanted to cover in this video. I will probably do a dedicated video on the pros and cons of these 1.5 volt lithium ion batteries, especially on the switching noise at a later time, as a lot of people had asked me to do that. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you liked it, Please don't forget to give it a big thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more videos like this in the future. Your participation makes videos like this possible. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time.